Inner Shell Conviction Game Review. Sam Fisher has been off the grid for a couple of years after his stint as a double agent, but Grimm still manages to find him. And he soon discovers that there may be more to his daughter's death than he initially thought. In this one, you don't work for Third Echelon. Technically. You do still have someone constantly feeding you information, and you are still working to thwart uh, an overall plot, a conspiracy, so you really have to wonder why they bothered with the whole personal touch to the story at all, because other than as part of the drive, it doesn't really matter in this. They could really have taken it out. And wouldn't have been different at all. This is a different approach than the other Splinter Cell games, and I'm not against that, but I do think that this exact game would have done better if it hadn't had to connect to the other Splinter Cell games. There are hardly any gadgets anymore, and the ones still there kind of feel like they were just left over, like they forgot to take them all out. You hardly use the, you know, camera, fiber optic camera. And the whole of stealth is essentially mostly useless now. You just have to make sure that you aren't where they can shoot you. It can actually be a good idea to reveal your position because you just, as long as you then take cover and then maybe, you know, hide somewhere else, then you can attack them while they're attacking where you used to be. And this is a cool feature, I'll admit, but the AI literally has them sometimes attack your shadow over and over, even after they can tell that you're not there. I mean, at point-blank range, this just seems silly. This is evidently inspired by such things as the Bourne Trilogy and other recent you know, very intense, unaffiliated agents and such. And that's a good idea, and I wish they'd taken it further. But again, this is really just kind of the same thing. Only the story is considerably more see-through and flat. You're going to be able to tell the twists from couple of hours in. That's another thing. This game is short. You can complete it in a day, day and a half at the most. The end credits pretty much last longer than the actual game does. Then there is of course the multiplayer and that does seem like fun. I've barely gotten it to work thus far. And it seems like you can only ever play co-op, meaning with one other person. So that kind of limits it. I'm not sure which of the earlier ones, but at least one of the earlier ones did have teams going up against each other. So the basic gameplay is you, you know, fighting cover to cover, and they do have a good cover system. Basically, you can take cover behind anything that is big enough. You do so by holding right click, and you can move from cover to cover by indicating with the mouse, with the cursor, where you want to take cover next, and then just pressing space. And Sam will rush there, making himself as small a target in the process as possible. And you can obviously not move very far like this. You can also use holding the right mouse button and pressing it sometimes to dodge, sort of, doing rolls and this sliding evade move sometimes. Then there's of course the mark and execute system. Basically you can't use it for very many at a time and each time you use it, regardless of if you take out one or four with the execute, you have to earn the ability to execute again by taking out someone at short range or taking a human shield. You can mark anyone you can see even if it's 
underneath the door or through a wall using the new sonar goggles, which are a reasonable enough feature. And one nice thing is, the enemy can sometimes use those too. You go up against enemy splinter cells in this one, and those are pretty fun to fight. But really, most of this game is essentially just fighting from cover to cover. That's it. We kind of have enough games like that, and the only really interesting new thing is you know, having them fight where you used to be, and then the very nice system of, you know, moving from one cover to another. Taking out someone at short range is easy as it could be. Granted, if you don't time it right, they can block you and you have to do it again, but other than that, it's just really easy. When I heard that they were gonna do a born kind of thing, I thought you'd actually have some control over fighting at short range. Imagine how intense it would be if they went for that thing that's been popular at least of you know press this key at this when indicated you know or they will get a hit in on you instead of you getting a hit in on them. I get it. That's been done a lot. I get that they were trying to do something new but in trying to do something new they went completely away from what gameplay is, almost. The game is painfully streamlined, and it takes away most of the risk, and you hardly feel like you're in control of Sam. You're pretty much just directing him. There are very few memorable instances. One does include controlling a camera that has direction, three cameras that have directional microphones, to listen in on a secretive conversation. That is kind of interesting. Also, you beat up a black guy in front of the statue of Lincoln at the memorial. Yeah. And I suppose that's about what there is to say. The actors are back, I think, or at least Ironside, he's the one people care about, and he still does a great job. Which is nice, because apparently the animators have forgotten what Sam looks like. Or maybe it's just me. He just looks completely off in this one. And, well, the graphics are fine, but they really could have been better. And, let's be honest, the facial expressions and the mouth movements could definitely have been done better. They were in the earlier games.